University of the Philippines study bear that the local franchising industry provided more than 1 million jobs and ranked third globally next to the U.S. and Japan. Franchises were also able to generate about $11 billion that year. If you want to cash in on that, let's ask registered financial planner and entrepreneur Fitz Villafuerte on the top five things to remember in buying a franchise. Fitz, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Let's start with the first one. It, the first one, obviously, is buying a franchise that is in line with your passion or interests. Talk about that. Where can you find the first information that matches your interests with a franchise? Yeah, the thing with buying a franchise, you're still going to run the business. And of course, running a business is not easy. So it helps if you're uh, working on a business that is in line with your interest or your passion because there will be difficult times there. And if, you, if your business is something that you're not really interested in or passionate about, then you'll give up easily. Fitz, there's, a, there's an interesting Arab saying that says, uh, when shopping for wisdom, go to every tent in the bazaar. The same thing for franchises. Yes, when you sir. come in, what kind of questions do you need to ask to get the right information to make a decision? Well, um, business franchising is really recommended for those who are not really that uh, uh, well-versed uh, on running a business. So you should always ask your franchisor what kind of support they give to, to their franchisees. And it also helps to go to the existing franchisees and get feedback from them. Uh, how happy are they uh, with working with the franchise owners? So basically, don't reinvent the wheel. Ask people who have been there. So that was your number two thing, was that basically you're supposed to ask all the existing franchisees to learn vicariously and also get things. Yeah, of course. The franchise owners will not uh, really tell you everything. No? So it's, it's really good to, to visit even like um, uh, see how the franchise, uh, other franchises are doing in their own locations to see if there's really good potential or good earning potential for the business. Okay, now, and as you go into a franchise, you move into tip number three, which is basically the franchise owner has to be people oriented and will have to provide various levels of support. What kind of support are you supposed to get from the franchise? Well, aside from the training in running the business, they should also provide like marketing support. Uh, if your sales are low, they should be able to give you advice. One, one way to know this is the franchise owners or somebody from the mother company should be easy, easy to contact and communicate with yeah, just in case you have issues with your franchise. Because there are sob stories out there when once you get the franchise, you're left on your own, right? Exactly. So you have to get someone who can handhold you through the process and grow together. That's right. That's Correct. Right. Okay, so number four, you mentioned basically that contrary to popular belief, it is better if the approval process is meticulous. So if you have a guy who's giving you a franchise, asking a lot of questions, do you think it's a good sign? Yes, it is a good sign because you don't want a franchise business who just accepts the money and gives out franchise to anyone who wants to apply. Uh, undergoing a meticulous process means that the franchise owners are really concerned about their their brand and their business and they're making sure that you are a good fit to their business and they're uh, making sure that you have the skills and the capabilities to to profit from from the franchise. Yeah, I mean, after all, it is money. So the more careful he is with money, the more feel, the more better, the better, the better you feel about this. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing is that some franchise owners just accept all anyone who would apply that results to your franchise being near to another franchise. And so diffuses you, everything, right? Yes, that's right. Now, finally, you mentioned the franchise agreement is open for discussions, and you just can't take anything at face value. How do you negotiate for a better franchise deal? Uh, well, of course, you have to, to know what, what is in the franchise agreement. One of the things that uh, always comes up in the discussion is what about the marketing uh, uh, campaigns and the promotions of products. Sometimes the mother company would have a product that would not really sell well in your area. Uh, things like that. Are you able to, to sell your own products in the, in the store also? Those are the things that you can uh, uh, discuss. Also, what if the franchise is not doing well? How uh, can you correct it, things? Yeah, yeah. Is it okay to pre-terminate the contract or things like that? Okay. Well, Fitz, thanks for your five, these five tips. I'm sure with a growing middle class, this is a great option for them to look at. Yes. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.